This is video 7.6, Fundamental Counting Principle. The objectives are listed here, and you can see some pictures of dice and cards and children in a line. And we're going to be talking about the Fundamental Counting Principle as an introduction to probability, permutations, combinations, and just basic uh, probability topics. This is all part of discrete math, and we are continuing our search for, for patterns and using numbers just for their own sake. The fundamental counting principle is really simple. It says if there are A ways for one activity to occur and B ways for a second activity to occur, then you multiply A times B, and that will be how many ways it is for both of them to occur. So for instance, if we have an ice cream sundae and they come in five flavors with four possible toppings, then if we multiply five times four together, we will have the number of different sundaes that can be made with one flavor of ice cream and one topping. It took me longer to say it than it did to do it. Now, you have to kind of know how many possibilities there are. For instance, if you're going to flip a coin, a coin has two sides, heads or tails. Rolling a dice, one die has six outcomes, one through six. Decks of cards, as you saw on that very first screen, have um, four suits with 13 cards in each suit, which equals 52 cards. Okay? and letters in the alphabet. We all know that there are letters A through Z, which are 1 through 26 letters. However, what you might not know is that they are case sensitive, and this has to do with how they are stored within a computer program, but capital letters are 1 through 26, small letters A through Z are also 1 through 26, so there would be a total of 52 outcomes. To order five objects, you can see the five balloons of different colors here. You can see the five children. Anyway, five objects or five people, five whatevers, um, are found by ordering, right? You have five objects. Um, the first time you order them, you have all five objects. The next person in line would be Four, taken from a group of four because there's already one person standing at the first of the line. So if you're looking here, you know, when you go to choose this person, you can choose one of five. When you choose this place, you're going to choose the, from the remaining four. Here you're going to choose from the remaining three, and so on and so on. So this actually turns out to be five factorial, or 120 ways that you can order objects in a line. Books on a shelf, um, balloons of different colors, and children. Um, what if you have marbles? And I found this picture online. My dad collects marbles, and I think they're beautiful. Um, but they're not red, green, and blue. So anyway, we're going to find the number of possible ways you can choose two marbles where order matters and when order does not matter. So for instance, um, if order matters... If order matters, then if I had um, red and blue, if I chose them in that order, then that would be a different order from blue and red. So that's where order matters. When order does not matter, then if you pick a red one and a blue one, you don't really care what order they're in. So obviously, order matters. You're going to actually have more um, possibilities, right? So order matters, you'll have six, and order does not matter, you'll just have three. So you'll have red-blue, um, red-green, and blue-green. Okay, that's when order does not matter, if you just have this column right here. That's three possibilities. Then if it does, then you just reverse the color. So you say green-red and green-blue are all different, and that's how you get the six. 
So the counting principle also works for more than two activities. So say for instance you have a coin, but you, you toss that coin five times. So the blanks here, one, two, three, four, five, are the possible, the coin tosses. And each time you toss a coin, you have two possibilities. So um, when you toss it this many times, this is two to the fifth power, or 32 possible outcomes. If you have a die, one die, one dice, two die, anyway, is um, rolled four times, then you have six possibilities for each one, which means that you would have six to the fourth power, which is 1,296 possibilities. Here's some other examples that you might run across. You've got a movie theater that has three sizes of popcorn, three choices of topping. How many possible ways can a bag of popcorn be purchased? Well, we have um, three sizes of popcorn times three choices of butter, so there's basically nine different ways. This is really easy. All right, license plate has letters and numbers. There are 26 letters and numbers can be, numbers, sorry, letters can be repeated. That's important, may be repeated. 10 digits and digits may be repeated. How many license plates can be made with two letters followed by three numbers? So one, two, two letters, 26 each, and three numbers, 10, 10, 10. Now, it's important the may be repeated because if they can't be repeated, then this would be 10, 9, 8, and this would be 26 and 25. And then all you do is just multiply all of that together, which is quite significant, um, 676,000 different license tags, which is good, right? Because you've got a lot of different cars. An ice cream shop offers 31 flavors. You order a double scoop cone. In how many different ways can the clerk put the ice cream on the cone if you wanted two different flavors? So this one, I don't want just two, I want five, but whatever, this is what it says. So the first time that I choose, I can choose from all 31 flavors. Since I can't repeat it, then I'm only going to have 30 after that. And when I multiply that out, I'm going to have 31 times 30, which is 930. If I can repeat, then that would be 31 times 31, and that's 961, or 31 more choices. Of course, if I want to do the 5 and I don't want to repeat, then I would have 31 times 30 times 29 times 28 times 27, and that would be a much larger number. But that way I could choose that ice cream. Burger Queen, um, and I found this hamburger, I think he's cute, has four burgers, five beverages, and three desserts. If you can choose one of each, how many possible meals are there? Well, there's four times five times three, which is 60. Here are some more interesting problems, and we're going to have similar ones to these in our homework uh, on the assignment, the problem set. So um, I found a, a map of the zip codes, the zones from the U.S., um, five-digit zip codes. Um, we'll notice that they are the digits, and I'm pretty sure they're zero through nine digits um, on all of the digits. So... Uh, if you have a five-digit number, two, three, four, five, then you would have um, ten digits for the first one, and they can be repeated. So if you wanted to know how many ten-digit zip codes are possible, or five-digit zip codes possible, you would have ten to the fifth power. Um, now, if you wanted to do, say, Oklahoma, or this region right here, this pink region where they're all start with seven, then your first number would just be one, right? Because it would have to be a seven. But then the other numbers could be 10, 10, 10, 10. So if you have a specific number that you needed to do, or say, for instance, you wanted to do seven, four, one, two, three, and know how many there were, um, then there would be 10 of these, 10 of these, 10 of these, and so you would have only a 1,000. 
So um, for zip codes, we're pretty good, right? Because we have uh, very few, we need very few because we use large areas to do them. But say uh, passwords. So what I want you to think about for class tomorrow is how many four digit passwords are possible? Okay, what if you use six digits? What happens if you add a letter? Special characters, case sensitive. Why do they say that about passwords? Why is a password that has one, two, three, four, five, six letters not very good? Or on some of them, when you have pin numbers and you only have four digits, how many possibilities are there? And why is that so easy to guess? So I want you to think about these things and think about some of the passwords that you have and, and the scheme that you use to develop your passwords. And we're going to talk about this in class because it's, you know, it's kind of timely. And, and it also is a really good explanation as to why you need to mix up letters and special characters and numbers when you're making a password. So I'll see you in class.